everybody. Welcome to Live Life For You. My name is Vanessa and I'm here with you this evening to do a highly requested promised video on anxiety and depression and some home remedies that you can do to kind of ease anxiety and panic attacks. But before we get on with that, I would like to first off say thank you so much to everybody who has emailed me and caused me to cry this evening. My mascara is is uh, still running. I tried to fix it before this video, but I, I just lost it. Um, you guys, I'm so proud of everybody, um, especially the ones who have emailed me and let me know what's going on in their lives and the way that I touch them. Um, apparently through my videos and through my words, I, I cannot believe that I can be so important to, to one person, let alone 50. Um, I am super, super proud of all of you guys who have made the choice to change your life for the better and to live life for yourself. And I'm proud of the ones that are doing it, that are actually on their journey. Um, I got an email tonight. Well, this is actually from the other day, but it's been a while since I've logged on. I got an email saying that they no longer eat the regular food from Taco Bell. They ordered off the fresh menu. They ordered off the light menu. So I'm super, super proud of you. You know who you are. You didn't get that large Pepsi, did you? And I'm so proud of the other one who is taking my advice and she is going to do two of my steps and that's going to be her first kind of transition into living life for herself. She's going to do a couple things on the list. I emailed her a, a few things, a few steps to get started and she told me, you know, tomorrow my goals are to do this and this, you know, that you suggested. So I'm really, really happy. I'm proud of everybody who is watching this video, who has sat here for one minute and 44 seconds and listened to me babble on about weight loss. Although weight loss is a huge key point um, on my channel as well as health, so it is depression and anxiety and panic disorder, and we are here this evening to get on to that. So without further ado, here we go. All right, as I discussed in my previous video, video, understanding depression, anxiety, and panic attacks, you know that panic attacks can feel like they're fatal. They can feel like you're going to die and that you're going to perhaps have a heart attack, one or the other. Uh, when you're having a panic attack, I know for sure you feel out of control, you feel helpless, you feel useless, you feel like you're out of body and you don't know what you, do, you don't know what you're gonna do. You just feel like you want to scream and you want a doctor there, you want somebody to help you, a breathing machine, something, anything, and nothing seems to work. Okay, let me tell you what my kind of remedies are for when I have panic attacks. Um, first off, <clears throat> I always know deep down that there are places where I do have panic attacks. Unfortunately, um, I do psych myself up a little bit. So that's some place I can kind of start. Like if I know that I'm about to go to Walmart, I can sit back and say, Vanessa, take a deep breath. You're going to Walmart. You know that you're going to think subconsciously that you're going to have a panic attack and that you're going to have to have somebody there with you. But you're fine right now. Right now you're fine. There's nothing that's going to happen to you in the 15 minutes it takes to get in your car, drive to Walmart, and get out of it, and go in the store that is going to cause you to die. I mean, you know, in most cases. But in my case, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's nothing that's going to happen. There's nothing that's going to change from me feeling fine, you know, more than likely, than to me going into Walmart and having a panic attack and dying because of it. Nobody dies from a panic attack, okay? The worst that can happen is that you'll lose consciousness and you'll still keep breathing because your body hyperventilates, okay? Now, I'm sure that, you know, there are possible cases of, you know, you can die if you lose consciousness and fall off a building or, you know, get hit by a car or something. So, I mean, there are consequences. It's just not likely, you guys, okay? The fear of fear is something I've been really trying to work on for the last six months. So, like I said, I will tell myself, Vanessa, here it is. Um, we'll be in Walmart 15 minutes. Calm down. Chill out. Have a seat. Okay. Have a seat is like my slang for like chill out. So have a seat, Vanessa. Don't worry about it. You're going to be fine. And then I'm usually kind of okay. But if I were to go, let's say continue on to Walmart and get the racing heart panic attack type feeling and you know, the world spinning around the cart spinning and I'm looking for somebody I know and I can't find the person I came with. I'm all alone on this aisle and everybody's going to hear me scream if I have to scream. Here's what I do. I walk over to where no one's at and I stand up and I close my eyes. If I can, if I'm dizzy, I don't do it. But I take a deep breath through my nose. Okay. 
hold it in for five seconds and let it out my mouth. And then I kind of look around and I look at kids. I like make sure that I look and see things that make me happy, like children make me happy, animals make me happy. And I look at all the kids out there just laughing and having a good time at Walmart. And I'm like, okay, this is all right. We're going to be okay. This is fine. We're not going to do this right now. We're not going to have a panic attack in the middle of Walmart. We're just not going to do it. Okay, we were fine earlier. This is ridiculous. We need to get what we're getting and go. And then if that doesn't work, I go and I go to the water fountain and I just get a lot of water. Okay, and I take just, you know, sips out of the water fountain and then I'll do my block breathing again, which block breathing is breathing through your nose, holding it in, and then letting it out. If you're getting a good deep breath, you should be able to feel it in your fingertips, okay? So when I know, I know that if I feel it in my fingertips, then I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm getting a good breath. Try to yawn, try to do something like that. And if that doesn't work, sometimes just walking out the door. Walking out the door, you can go back in. Walking out the door, saying, okay, we're out, you know. We're out, do we feel better? And all the, you know, nine times out of 10 you do just because you're not in Walmart anymore. And then I say, okay, Dummy Vanessa, now are you happy now? That was all over nothing. Now go back in and get your shopping done. So I go back in, I go buy the makeup, I go buy the clothes, something that I'm happy to do and take my mind off of it. All right, and if worse comes to worse, I take a, a medication that I'm prescribed. So you can talk to your doctor about that. But when I'm laying around the house and I have a panic attack, which isn't usually likely because I don't tend to have panic attacks at home. If I do, it's because it's lack of sleep, too much stress, so on and so forth, haven't eaten enough during the day, um, and I can pretty much tell when these are going to happen. So when I'm at home and I have a panic attack, I put my hair up in a, in a high ponytail, and I haul my booty to the bath, and I run a hot bath with lavender baby or lavender uh, bubble bath, bath gel, whatever you have that smells good, lavender, chamomile, tea, honey, anything that smells like that is going to relax your nerves. It never fails. And then while the bath water is running, I come down here and I make a glass of milk. Just a regular cup of milk. Okay? And then I go to the bathroom, turn off some of the lights, dim the lights, soak in the tub, and drink my milk. Nine times out of ten, by the time I get done taking the bath, I feel all cozy and I'm not panicky anymore. Alright? So that's another step. Another thing that you can do if you're at home having a panic attack or anywhere else, a cold rag with water on it splashed up to your face and just kind of, you know, fan your face off a little bit, stretch out, stretching your arms, you know, doing anything that involves relaxing the muscles and then just block breathing again. Laying down can help. Uh, turn the air on. I know that when I'm having a panic attack, that's the first thing I think of is turn that dag daggum air on and make it cold, you know, so I kind of can feel a little bit chilled and a little bit cool. And, you know, you can also tell when you're having a panic attack is if you're sweating, you know, if you're sweating under your arms or if you're if you're kind of sweating above your lip a little bit, you know that it's just a panic attack. So um, in a later video, I will do the differences between a panic attack and a heart attack because that is something that us um, anxiety and panic sufferers need to know. It is critical, crucial that we know the difference. So usually if I'm sweating, it just means, you know, I need, I'm a little bit hot and um, I'm thinking too much of it. But the main thing is, and I will repeat this again, souping yourself up for one, getting yourself excited to have one, not excited, but you know what I mean, is the main reason. Fear of fear, fear of loss of control, um, fear of having another attack in the same place that you just did. Um, a while back or maybe even 15 years ago anything that's going to remind you of having another one you need to tell yourself that you're fine I'm fine I'm not going to do this I'm not going to have one and try to have a positive experience at that place remind yourself of how great that place was the last time you went or the special that I got on aisle five or you know whatever and be excited to go there don't be afraid don't be afraid we're going through this together part two will be up this week. Thank you for watching and remember to always live life for you.